All right, how we doing, guys? Um, I have a live JTV show going here, and I'm doing a couple reviews views during the show, in case you weren't aware. So, uh, what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be doing a comparison between KBS and Firestone Walker's Parabola 2013. Both editions are 2013. Um, and uh, later on, after that, we're going to be doing the Sukaba separately, if I'm still able to uh, function. So, uh, and everyone here is chatting along, and I will no doubt lose uh, my place in the chat, just like Chad always does. Um, but anyway, here we have KBS. Uh, I've done it before. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I got it, My first bottle I got was from Daniel Harper, uh, Endosymbiosis, Beyond the Four. And um, so this is 2013. I believe it's still 11.2... 70 IBUs, 11.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, aged in uh, American uh, bourbon, oak barrels. So... Uh, yeah, and it's an excellent, excellent stout. So basically, we're going to be comparing this to uh, Parabola and seeing, well, not necessarily which one's the better beer, because I have a feeling they both will probably uh, score a 5 out of 5, but we're going to see just, just what the differences are. Oh, I can smell it right now. Uh, I've got some people here saying the Sukaba is worthy of hoarding. Mm. Uh, basically, everyone on the chat is uh, insulting each other. So that's good. Alright, that's enough for now. So there you go, that's absolutely pitch black, nice brown head. You swirl it and you get the nice legs on the side of the glass. Absolutely beautiful in the glass. And Joe says he has one of these beers for uh, Don Rigg, which is cool. All right, so we'll just go right to the aroma here. Again, big vanilla, a lot of chocolate. And there's a there's a sweetness, almost like a dark cherry kind of sweetness. This is it's basically the uh, bourbon, really really big. It's just really coming out. Those bourbon barrels, they just really stand out, and they just sort of suck up the other standard like imperial uh, stout uh, flavors that you expect like coffee, chocolate, things like that and it j they sort of just like enhance them it, it, they, they sort of meld together and enhance really well it smells almost almost slightly boozy um, you could argue it's either booze or it's, it's just like the intense barrel fla uh, flavors themselves coming out in the aroma but 11.2 percent you would kind of hope that maybe you would get a little bit of booze out of it. it smells very good. It's a very complex uh, aroma, but at the same time, it's it's not one of those ones where the notes fly by. It's like they all jump out and they sort of stay right where they are. Hmm. I don't know what they're talking about now in the chat. All right, we're going right to the taste. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, the um, the aroma just carries right over into the flavor. Uh, th that those bourbon flavors are just really, really big there. Uh, again, they enhance the chocolate and the coffee uh, character of this thing. You got the vanilla coming by. You got the barrel, the woodiness in the back. It's not necessarily big. And incredibly tannic or anything, but it's it's very very nice. What alcohol I'm getting is 
is basically just the warmth going down. You don't really taste the alcohol too much. Uh, I think I said before in my original review of this, it's a very, very smooth, uh, drinkable beer for an Imperial Stout. Um, it's dangerously drinkable. It's one of those ones where uh, you see people saying, oh, you should just sip on this. And really, you could drink this without sipping on it. You, It's one of those ones that sort of lulls you into a false sense of security. Um, it is not a sipper. I mean, you wouldn't know it's a sipper going into it. Let's put it that way. Like, look how I'm slugging that down. It's beautiful. I think people are working out trades now on the... Um, chat here. I think Rhino is threatening violence, or maybe threatening violence on behalf of his friend, uh, the cantankerous cook. I'm getting an interesting chat here tonight. I don't think anyone here is happy giving up their Friday night watching me, so they're all uh, resorting to name-calling and violence amongst each other. Well, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful Imperial Stout. Um, it still holds up. I don't remember what year it was that I had. I think it was a, I think it was a 2011. It was either 2011 or 2012 that I had last time, and this tastes just like the the last one. Um, very, very good. Um, the the wood from the barrels, uh, after it lingers in the, in the finish, dries out your mouth a little bit. It's very, very nice. It's just, it's just, it, it's, it, you know, it's what everyone says about this beer. It, it actually lives up to the hype. It's an amazing beer. No, this isn't Parabola, um, Max, Nick. Now, let's see, Ivana Rhino is trying to catch me up with the conversation here. Joe is blaming Don on the Bud Light Shalada uh, that he sent, and uh, Paul threatened to punch whoever sent it to us, and they had, yeah, okay, I see, I can see why he'd want to avoid uh, the violence there. But he shouldn't have sent the Chiladas, to be fair. He could have sent them all to me. And I wouldn't have been able to punch him in the head because uh, I would have died. Daniel owes you some in a trade, Jameson. Right on. He, he stocked up, uh, from what I understand, when he sent me his one, he stocked up big time. Okay, so... Um, I am recording live here on the thing, so we're going to go right to the parabola and see what we think of that. So we got Firestone Walker uh, out of California, of course, KBS founders, they're from Michigan. Uh, Firestone Walker, known for doing, at the very least, taking so like traditional British styles and giving them their own little twist. Um, so we got Firestone Parabola here, 2013. Uh, it's another barrel aged stout. This is a Russian Imperial Stout instead of just a standard Imperial Stout. Uh, not that there's a big difference there. 13% um, ABV, yeah, 13%. Uh, 82 IBUs, I believe. Aged 12 years in the actual American bourbon barrels. And uh, British Ale host yeast. Uh, that's all you really need to know, I guess. So, uh, all these were sent by Average Joe, by the way. So, um, big thanks to him, in case I didn't say that beforehand. Oh, did I say 12 years? Yeah, 12 months. 12 months. Okay. Although, you can age these for quite a while. Several years, at least. People are giving me shit now for fucking up.
This is going to be a very long video. I apologize to YouTube viewers. But, you know, fuck it. You don't like it, don't watch it. Better hit on that. It's basically the same color as the um, KBS. I think maybe I'm getting a bit more ruby red highlights out of this one. But it's pretty much just looking at it straight ahead. It's the same color. This is a pitch black abyss. Um, but just the, the head is more, uh, it's lighter in color, it's more tan than it is brown, and it seems to be holding a lot better, which is interesting, because it's actually 2% higher than, uh, in alcohol than the, uh, KBS, but, looks very nice, looks the part. Mmm. Jameson says the last two year, the last two editions of this were uh, 12.5. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, from what I understand, this does change up a little bit every every year. So, which is what I like about actually special beers like this. I don't mind that at all because, you know, this is one that's technically it's meant to be saved a little, uh, and. Um, you know, vintages, they're meant to be saved, and uh, they're meant to, you know, compare compare different years, like uh, Fuller's Vintage Ale is a good a good example. Uh, and Jameson says the original one was 13% as well. See, it's helpful to actually have an American in the chat who uh, who's familiar with these beers, because you don't necessarily see this information online, so uh, that's really cool. <laughs> and now Joe's giving Jameson shit for giving straight facts instead of just, you know, allowing me to uh, spout bullshit all over the place. So we'll go right to the aroma here. Okay, this smells more, right off the bat, this smells more like um, a more standard Imperial Stout in a way in that the barrel quality is not as big in the nose as it is in KBS. Here I'm getting a lot more dark fruits than anything else, and it's not necessarily bourbon barrel fruitiness. It's much more like just the malty fruitiness that you can tend to get from these sort of things. I'm getting, I am getting a little bit of the wood. I'm not getting any alcohol at all. Uh, definitely chocolate. But I'm getting, um, it reminds me a lot actually of Tin Fitty. From um, Oscar Blues, it's got that sort of same sweetness. It's bordering on maybe like a kind of a licorice kind of thing, but it's, it's definitely dark fruit. It's like there's, I dare say there's coconut. Does that sound right to anybody? I'm, uh, it seems like I'm getting a, like almost a coconutty kind of flavor on here. But uh, yeah, it's like I'm I'm sticking with it. Coconut. Uh Jameson's saying yes, less bourbon barrel influence in this year's more raw oak and roast. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting a roasty like basically that's that's what I'm thinking, roasty coconut. It smells very nice. It's like yeah the barrel character is not as big. And Jameson says most barrel-aged beers from Firestone Walker have a coconut. Okay, so I'm not, it's not just me. I'm not crazy then. But yeah, it, it very coconut, and it's that's actually probably the dominant sort of the dominant note next to the dark fruit smells I'm getting in this. A little bit of vanilla. I think that's mostly where the barrel uh, quality comes in. And chocolate. And maybe, maybe espresso, maybe a little bit of espresso. I, I'd say this is actually a bit more complex on the nose than um, in uh, KBS right off right off the bat. KBS is more intense. Uh, this is much a little bit more subtle, and I find it a, to be a bit more complex. So sweet. We're gonna go right into it. Cheers, everybody.
Mm. Damn. Again, like KBS, the, the aroma does translate right into the flavor very well. But I de I'd say the, the actual taste brings out some notes that were kind of muted in the nose. Uh, they're much stronger. Um, the coconut is right up front. It's very big in the actual taste. Um, I'm getting chocolate all around the sides. Baker's chocolate. Uh, espresso coffee. Uh, coconut, a little bit of wood, vanilla, all coming out in the finish. I think there might be a, again, like I was saying with the nose, there might be a bit more complexity in this one than in KBS. Um, the the finish is definitely a bit drier. Now they're talking about black nuts being licked in the chat. I don't think I want to look back in the chat and see where that started. Definitely a lot drier finish. Like that coconut and the wood, uh, I'm getting a bit more of the actual bourbon uh, fruity flavors uh, mixed in here in the actual taste. Really dancing on the back of the tongue. Um, it, it definitely is a lot drier. It is a lot drier in KBS. Uh, I think some of the alcohol might actually be coming out here um, as far as alcohol stringency drying up in the back. Uh, again, I'm not getting any real alcohol flavor. Um, getting a little bit of warmth going down, but I actually think I felt more warmth coming out of the KBS than I did from this. So That is a fantastic, fantastic um, Imperial Stout. So, I think it's no surprise I'm going to give that a 5 out of 5. Um, I, I can't say it's better than KBS. It's it's as good as KBS, but in a different way. It's one of the, it's one of those hard things where you run into like these big, flavorful, complex Imperial Stouts. Um, where they're so damn equal in just about every way that it it really comes down to what you prefer in different flavor profiles uh, maybe maybe something just as small as which one finishes better is what you know uh, sort of does it for you <sighs> no Joe no cartoon like ran on the ABV for this one because unlike the cartoon I enjoy big ABVs and beers, especially when they're done so well, like in these two beers, where they don't hinder the actual drink, they actually improve the drink and add to it. Um, they're both fantastic. This is a 5 out of 5. The KBS is a 5 out of 5. Um, which one do I prefer? I think maybe KBS is the one I still prefer. I, I sort of like some of the flavors there, and the flavors and the aroma are a bit more bold in that one. But this is this is a great beer, um, and in in honest all honesty, uh, thinking back on these other big American stouts and, and such that I've had, um, I think Goose Island Bourbon County Stout still beats both of these for me personally. They're the the Bourbon County one is just kind of evil. It's like it's it's dark and dirty and evil and big and aggressive and I think that's what I like the most about that one but they're all fives across the board don't get me wrong they're all top fucking drawer shit and big thanks to Average Joe for sending these to me man um, I'm really really enjoying these <sighs> yeah yeah um, if you like Basically, what it boils down to is if you like a drier, bigger, drier finish, then you're probably going to like the Firestone Walker Parabola better than you are the KBS. The KBS is not as big on that dry finish. 
Um, but they do have a lot of similar flavor, um, and the KBS has a better aroma overall, stronger aroma at least. Um, but they're both great beers, and uh, that's as far as I'm going to go with compar comparison, uh, comparing them. So cheers, uh, thanks for everyone watching here in the chat, and thank you guys for watching at home, and I'm going to turn the camera off now and get into the chat with these guys, and then maybe we'll do the uh, Sukaba in a little while.